Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about bonded coin errors. Now these are planchets that have literally been fused by a striking press and have become bonded to one another, so multiple planchets into one, but there's so much depth with this, we're going to be bringing on Travis over a Zoom uh, presentation. He's an errors collector and expert, deals in them, and has a lot of experience, so I'll be talking through the full picture on these bonded coin errors with him. I guarantee you'll learn a lot if you stick around, so let's get right into the video. All right, so we are back with Travis. We're going to start talking about these bonded coins. As you can see in front of us, just some really notable, interesting errors that jump out. So thanks, Travis, for joining us today. What are we looking at in general? Then we'll get into some examples that we can talk through and hear any anecdotes along the way. Well, thank you for having me. So what we're looking at here are actually one of my favorite error types, which is when they become bonded. So in a nutshell, um, obviously the press is malfunctioning and you have a planchet fed in, usually misstruck the first time. Uh, and then an additional planchet or more gets fed in. Uh, and then through the forces of the striking pressure, they ended up getting stuck together and bonded. Um, and that's, that's basically it. Yeah, so it's going to be conjoined. I guess our first example here, you know, they do have pretty strong values and we can get in maybe a little bit later. We can talk more about the values, but in terms of how these seem to have been bonded together, um, maybe we can talk through this coin in front of us. Yeah, so um, on the left there, uh, kind of in the center where it's really distorted and you can see the edges of the planchet um, rising up like a cup. And then uh, on the reverse side that it's blank or as error collectors like to say uniface, that that was the first planchet and it was struck up against another one which caused it to be uniface on one side. And then it was starting to wrap around the die shaft itself um, and then an additional planchet got fed in and was struck on both sides. And this might be a saddle strike with the third strike on the left um, up in the 12 o'clock position, um, which was also obstructed on the reverse side. So you have uh, the initial coin, which was struck out of collar, looks like it was becoming a cap or is a cap. And then it was struck two more times, possibly at the same time being saddle struck with a tandem die pair uh, with one having contact with the reverse die, which would be, you know, the full reverse that you can see. And then the other strike was up against another planchet and uniface. Gotcha. And well, so in terms of what, maybe two clarifying things. So the tandem die, that's, we're saying that there's multiple dies striking in the press and that they're sort of coming together here. And that's why you see it's like perfectly 180 separation. And then the other question would be focused. So there's another planchet that's probably going to have the strike on one side, but not be yeah. involved in the bonded pair. Right. So there's at least one other planchet um, that would mate up to this i don't know if because of how distorted it might be if you had it if you could even figure out that this you know other coin belonged to this particular bonded pair and there could be another with that um third the smallest of the three strikes unless it was the same planchet so if that makes sense cool well the next one is one of the ones in the sort of intro slide but really you know definitely a saddle strike uh has yep. some similar characteristics to the last one and the red color i think stands out certainly sold for a strong uh you know premium to yeah. the three cents or, or the the two cents that it would <laughs> represent um, yeah, this is this is a really nice one um yeah very similar to the nickel where you've got the initial strike which is kind of looking die cap ish and then you've got um the two other strikes which definitely appear to be saddle struck because you have the hump 
in the middle. I think what kind of makes this pair neat is that that second planchet sticking way off, but it's actually bonded um, and not just, you know, free floating. Yeah, what, what do so, you think would make that happen? I mean, it, I don't it, know. The pressure it, is so strong that these stick together. Yeah, I guess maybe, you know, the metal just buckled enough that kind of created a little lock between them. It's an interesting pair for sure. It's also a, um, a much better date and mint mark for this kind of error, which is probably um, reflected in the price that it got. Yeah, maybe we can stop and there's plenty more we'll go through. But in terms of the rarer coins, you know, maybe there's some denominations that occurs more frequently. Is it the that San Francisco mm -hmm. just doesn't see a ton of these produced? Or how yes. do you view the yeah. S, S mint definitely. Um, being that it's 1969 is somewhat more of an unusual year. A lot of these, well, not a lot, but a lot, um, a fair amount of bonded sets and mated pairs. Um, a lot of them were made in 1964, also uh, 1999, 2000. So those are, I don't want to say they're common, but... If you're seeing a mated pair or a bonded pair, um, you know, they fairly regularly come with dates of that uh, range, 64, 65, 99, 2000. Those are just kind of big, big years for errors in general. So makes sense. And in terms of the valuation, you know, is, is this something that's been strong for a long time or? Yes. Is how is definitely it, you know is, um, are these in or what, what's the history i'd say they're always in bonded coins are pretty rare to come across um yeah there's there's some real dramatic ones out there we talked um earlier about i know of you know some stacks of cents that are 20 to 40 planchets strong um haven't seen one come up for sale publicly lately, but you know, they are out there. So yeah, these bonded coins, you know, they're just really visually impressive, which I think uh, keeps the prices strong for them. Makes sense. There's probably not that many out there relative. I know when I was searching the relative to some of the other error types, this one yeah. in front of us, 1999. So it's one of those sort of main years. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if you have any insight as to why those years stand out, and then maybe we can also talk through the coin in front of us. I think, um, you know, I think a lot of this is conjecture, but it makes sense. Like 1964, um, they're preparing to change from silver coinage to clad coinage, and there's a lot going on. So I think that, you know, maybe their quality control wasn't what it usually is. Um, 99 and 2000, uh, you had the, the uh, Y2K computer thing going on at the time. Uh, state quarters were coming out. So I think, again, maybe they were, you know, too busy to check. I don't know. But it just, yeah, they, uh, they made a lot in 99, which is Certainly. great for an error collector. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in, in terms of the one in front of us, it doesn't have yeah. sort of the dramatic appear, or it's pretty dramatic, but relative to some of the other coins we've seen, it looks like this is almost cupped up in a pretty interesting way, but I guess it would be two planches thick in terms of the weight and, and certainly, yeah. you know, I can, I can kind of see in the image on the left there, you can see towards the bottom, the edge of the one planchet and then the underlying planchet underneath. Oh Yeah pretty at least to me fairly obvious um i like this one because it's pretty clearly multi-struck um, which with the tag designates it that way um you can kind of tell that well a because um on the washington side you can clearly see that it's been struck more than once um but you've got the reading around the edge um, on the Delaware side, which shows you that at least was partially in the collar and then has expanded further from there. So yeah, I, I really like this one. Um, 
just because you've got on the Washington side, the, uh, <laughs> the extra strike kind of sticking out and being really distorted. Yeah, no, that, that, uh, I understand that. Do you think with the state quarter errors, you know, there's a fair amount probably in the 1999 and 2000. Um, yeah. Is that something where people collect because they're from the state or are people trying to assemble a collection, which might be pretty tough to do of the 50 states, you know, because there's probably more quality control as time goes on? Or how do you see, you know, state quarters with the errors fitting into collectors? Uh, I definitely think that people try to find errors from their state. I do it. I'm from Arizona. Arizona uh, state quarter errors are incredibly hard to find, but I've managed to get a couple. Um, sometimes I wish I lived in a state <laughs> that was one of the first. <laughs> yeah, so I could get my hands on a more you know dramatic error. But yeah, if you were to put together a state quarter collection of errors something like this it would be impossible just because certain states there aren't going to be um, a bonded pair that exists but a more common error that could easily be done say you know a small broad strike or a curved clip or something like that cool things that still get made today yeah yeah no i think you probably would have to broaden it i'd probably if i was collecting i'd go one error of any kind from each state that'd be a cool objective yeah, to... I, I actually could easily be done yeah how about this one um more right. of a two planchet bonded pair you know similar to the last one in terms of less surface area overall though this one you know they really seem to have been struck on top of each other or is yeah. that sort yeah. of would this just be one strike this could be one strike um just because the you know, having two planchets together would create a lot of pressure and would make it expand out really wide, like we see here. I, I would think it's probably struck more than once, but there is really, I don't know, really no way to be sure. Um, not as crazy as the next one, which is this two-piece <laughs> bonded die cap. Uh, maybe we can do a brief without, you know, we'll save the super long explanation for the, the video on cap dies, but um, this one, you know, stands out for sure. Is the 1999 more common date, but, you know, <laughs> this yes. one's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I really like this one because of the really high walls you can see um, next to the date which this guy definitely was struck multiple times. Um, and also kind of seeing, kind of seeing an image on the reverse. So this probably, by the looks of it, you can kind of see faint outlines of design elements there where it may have been struck normally once and then planchets were fed underneath and it was creating brockages. Um, and then the design just sort of slowly, you know, melted away, so to speak, as it kept striking other planchets being fed underneath it. Yeah, I think I can see, especially yeah, you can the, see that. Oh, the Monticello. Yeah, and... I think I can see America there. Yeah. I also see it up on further on the second uh, planchet there in the little stack. I don't know if you can see that where the... Um, yeah, the design oh, yeah, elements, yeah, kind of yeah. come out there. Uh, um, and then so this was, this was, oh, sorry to interrupt. This is probably a brockage maker where it was making brockages or what some people would call um, a capped die strike. I'm talking about the planches that would be fed underneath this one as it was stuck, stuck to the die. And would this have been just in terms of the process to make it again, I, I may be way off, but is this, so you're saying it was possibly struck normally, then a planchet gets fed underneath those get bonded. And then the yep. ones after that are not getting bonded, but they're just yes. the, and the, being the, struck on one side by this die cap. And then those coins would have, would be called a capped die strike. They might have brockage, so they could be called a full brockage. Um, late stage brockage as the die cap starts to the designs start to you know blend and not be as strong as they used to be and eventually if 
there's no designs at all, then you just end up with a plain capped die strike, um, you know, where there's no brockage visible. Gotcha. Um, in terms of one question here, we have, you know, another 1999 dated Connecticut quarter. This one sort of stands out and we'll talk about it more, but are there certain denominations that are tougher to find with these? Generally speaking, um, the higher the denomination, the harder it's going to be to find an error. Um, quarters might be the exception to that rule just because, you know, they're commonly used. So they make a lot of quarters. They make a lot of sense. So nickels, dimes, half dollars, um, dollars are usually going to be more rare. Okay. Um, yeah, this quarter here, it's a beautiful set. Um, this one, I really like this one because uh, looking at the Washington side over on the left where you can see the one planchet was just getting squeezed. Um, it's split. So there's a lot of a lot of pressure happening, um, which obviously helps them bond together. And then I'm looking here. See this this bonded pair also looks like there were other planchets involved um, getting struck with it. It's just a shame they didn't also bond to this set. Yeah, and what's creating the distorted image over here? And when you say the planchets would have been involved, is that because of the sort of uniface or the indent? Ones? Right, yeah. But there's definitely at least one other planchet involved. And the distortion you're seeing is could be from being struck up against another planchet or just from, you know, being... It looks to me like it was struck up against another planchet at some point. But I think some of that distortion is also coming just from the, the strikes and um, the warping of the design elements from metal flow and the strike pressures involved. Awesome. That's a, that's a beautiful pair, though. Yeah. This one is, uh, you know, sort of an interesting shape, and there's a lot going on on the bottom of it three-piece bonded die cap and so you know a lot of the other ones have been two-piece um so is that yeah. tougher to find or pre-priced in in terms of being more expensive uh usually um the more planchets involved um the more it's going to be worth this one is uh, a little different in that you can see um on the obverse side uh down towards the six o'clock area where it looks like it's the metal has become so thin and stretched out that pieces have broken off um you know during the making of this what's also interesting is you can see uh around the outside that there's brockage elements there so it was at some point struck up against another struck coin on that side and on the reverse where the design elements are really stretched out. So it was definitely up against some other uh, blanks and, or planchets. So even though this is a three piece, it's pretty evident that this was probably in, uh, in the midst of an even larger stack. They just didn't bond together the additional pieces that would go with this coin. Ah, interesting. Maybe, uh, yeah, you could either have a 40 piece one or maybe, you know, yeah. three piece ones like this. Yeah. Yeah. And so for our last coin, we've got, again, another one fitting in 1965. So a common date, but not a common denomination looks pretty different from a lot of what we've seen. Some interesting things going on around three o'clock and, you know, on the, you know, above his hair. And so maybe we can just break this one down. Sure. I really like this one um, just because it's very visually eye appealing. Um, it's clear that there's two planchets. Uh, I think what makes this pretty interesting to me is that it's clearly for both planchets. It was die struck on both sides. Um, and then uh, next to the date, you can see that there's an indent there, which there's probably another planchet involved on that one. And that third planchet would be interesting because you would have uh, 
a different looking brockage on one side. And yeah, if you if you had that third coin in the mix, would be an even better set than it already is. But that's this is probably my favorite of the ones that we've looked at. Awesome. And what what do you think is happening? There's sort of this little clad layer peeking through or the, the copper layer, maybe the cloud layers might be missing. And then there's a little bit of like a second strike or an extra yeah. hairline up there. It's kind of hard to tell if that's a result, the hair, if that's some sort of metal flow or if there's yeah some other, if this was maybe struck twice um, and a little bit of clad showing, it kind of looks to me like it could be the cause of the planchet underneath it digging in it's hard to say and then one other examining it in hand it's sometimes hard to say but it is interesting yeah one other thing that i notice on this one you know we see the 65 the date premium is that going to be a big thing to have the two dates uh, clearly showing or error, error collectors definitely like to see more well a date and especially more than one date so yes, that's always always popular. And with error collectors probably tough to actually give a, a value. But say that this was you know rotated a little bit and there was only one date. You know, do you think this would be a fifteen hundred dollar mm-hmm. coin or eighteen hundred dollar coin or how would you? Play? I I think um, just the fact it has a date showing would probably keep it around the you know the same value. I mean, it, it adds a little extra which somebody might pay a premium for, but I wouldn't think it would be a huge amount overall just because this is a nice, you know, a nice rare bonded dime. Yeah. Yeah. That I've, I feel like we often see that and that makes sense. If it's mm-hmm. a low dollar item, then these little characteristics can have an outsize like percentage increase. Whereas for things that are rare to, begin with like a overdate variety or something like that on a gold coin makes a much lower lesser difference than you know on a on a coin that would be worth a few cents otherwise yeah Um, i agree yeah so any other things you know that a collector or somebody who really knows errors and bonded pairs would think from the values or the history of these coins side that i might not have asked about Mm, i can't think of anything off the top of my head i think probably covered these pretty well i hope anyway (laughs) awesome thank you so much and i'll look forward to doing some similar videos you know a lot of other error types to cover from the experience perspective so thanks so much for chatting with me today Uh, my pleasure thank you for having me thanks for watching the video i'd encourage you to like comment and subscribe to the channel to stay updated i've also got facebook instagram and twitter so you can follow me there Um, treasuretownyt.com is the main channel website definitely give that a visit i've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel Uh, coingrabbag.com as well currently redirects there but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags both made by me and other sellers a lot of different options so that's a good way to support Um, There's also treasuretowncoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, Coinmeltprice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world. A lot of resources in that website. And then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins, metals, cards, and collectibles in general. So I'll see you on my future videos. Looking forward to seeing you there. And hope you have a good day.